Hi, this is Ms. Warnell. We're going to continue with um, the unit on moles and we're going to focus right now on percent composition. Okay, so we vary a little bit from the mole, just a little bit. So the percent composition of a compound is the mass percentages of all the elements in the compound. This, when we're doing these percentages, it's the same as what you learned in math class. It's the part over the whole times 100. What's unique to chemistry is where are we getting this part and where are we getting this whole. So you can find the percent composition of compound if you're given its chemical formula or if you're given the masses of all the elements making up a sample of the compound. So, for example, find the percent composition of magnesium chloride. Now, of course, you have to be able to write the formula so that you have the correct ratios and masses. So we have magnesium chloride here. So what we're we'll going to do is we'll start just like we did when we did the uh, molar mass. We'll write down each element. We'll say, well, how many magnesiums are in many magnesium chloride? One. What's the mass of each one? Well, we would go to the periodic table, which you should have out. Let me say you should have out your periodic table, a calculator, and paper to be writing this down. So find magnesium, and you'll find that it's 24.30. And so, since there's only one of them, it's 24.30. And then for chlorine, in the formula, you have two chlorine. And if you look on the periodic table, not if, look on the periodic table now, and you'll see it's 35.45. Okay, and when you multiply 35.45 times 2, let me go ahead and do that. 35.45 times 2, you get 70.9. And so we'll add that 70.9 plus 24.30, and we get 95.20. Now that's the molar mass, okay? That's the mass of the whole compound. When we do percent composition, we want it for each element. So how much of that 95.2 is magnesium? It's 24.30. So we'll take the 24.30 and divide it by the whole amount, which is 95.20. And when we get that, we'll multiply it by 100. And when you do that, you'll find that it is 25.53% magnesium. So when we do the percent composition for chlorine, we say, well, how much of the 95.20 is chlorine? 70.90. So we take the 70.90, which is the part, divide it by the whole amount, and once we do that, we multiply it by 100, and we'll find that that percentage is 74.47% is chlorine. Okay. There's different ways you can show this work, but you do have to show all the work. Find the percent composition of aluminum in aluminum sulfate. So we have to make sure we can write the formula correctly. Aluminum sulfate is Al sulfate is... Uh, has a negative 2 charge, and aluminum has a 3 charge. So this is what it looks like. But we just want the percent composition of aluminum in there. So when we go to do this, we could just say, well, I'm going to show you an alternate way to do this. How much of it is aluminum? Well, we have two aluminums times the 26.98. That's the part over the whole amount, okay? So then what we can do is say, well, how much is, um, how much is it of it is the whole amount? Well, we have two aluminums times 26.98, plus we have three sulfurs, which is 32.06, plus we have 12, 3 times 4, 12 oxygen at 16.00. We can divide that, multiply it by 100, and we'll find that the percent composition of aluminum and uh, aluminum sulfate is 15.77%. You could have worked this the way I worked the previous. You could have figured out um, aluminum, sulfur, um, and oxygen and worked it the same way. I'm just showing you different ways you can show percent composition. Now, the next question says, well, how many grams of aluminum are in 250 grams of aluminum sulfate? Well, since we know the percent of aluminum sulfate, we know the percent of aluminum in aluminum sulfate, we'll just take that 15.77, which since it's a percent, we know that we're going to, that means 15.77 over 100. 
which ends up being 0.1577. That's just extra for, you know, just in case you forgot the math. Okay. So what we need to be able to do is take the percent, pull it out of percent, whichever way you remember how to do it, and multiply it to the total amount of the sample. And when we do that, we find that it is 39.4 grams of aluminum. Notice that I paid attention to significant digits. I put a unit and I wrote the substance. So what is 15.77% of 250? Why, it's 39.4. So you should pause the video and try working this one. It says, how many grams of calcium or in 45.6 grams of calcium nitride? I would first write down calcium nitride and I would try to find the percent of calcium in calcium nitride. All right, so find the percent calcium and calcium nitride, then use it to find the mass of calcium. Now, of course, if you cannot remember how to write the correct formula, you will not get this correct. So I set it up where I did part out of the whole. This is the part that is calcium. There's three calcium times 40.08. Get that from the periodic table. Over the whole amount is the molar mass of the whole thing. I find that it's 81.10% um, is calcium. So we take that percentage, pull it out of its percentage format, and multiply it against the amount in the problem, and we find it's 37.0 grams calcium. Now I'm going to show you another way, because I love dimensional analysis, so I'm going to show you this. You could have started by writing down your given of grams of calcium nitride. Okay, so watch this. If you like dimensional analysis, which I do, so you write down your given. You're not in moles, so I converted to moles. And I did a mole ratio between um, calcium nitride and calcium. For every one of these, you get three moles of calcium. But it wanted the grams of calcium, so if I would have stopped here, I would have just been in moles. So then I did one mole, because and voila, I love dimensional analysis. What is, okay, so let's look at hydrates with this in mind. And remember, hydrate is um, a salt that has water attached to it. Okay, what is the percent of salt and the percentage water and magnesium sulfite heptahydrate? All right, so, well, let's first write this formula down. Magnesium sulfate, and then we do the little dot, just doesn't mean multiply, it just means attach. Hepta means seven, so for every one of these, you have seven waters attached to it, okay? So we can find, we can work, there's so many different ways to work this. So what I'm going to do is find my, um, my mass of my salt and my mass of my uh, high, uh, water. So when I say the salt, I'm talking about this part here. I'm gonna say the water, I'm talking about this part. So I'm gonna take the magnesium sulfate and I'm gonna find out the mass of it, okay? So we have one magnesium plus one sulfur, and we have four oxygen. And so the molar mass of um, the magnesium sulfate is 120.36 grams of magnesium sulfate. So then when I look at the water, okay, so water, you have two times 1.008 plus one times 16, and of course you find an 18.02. However, how many waters are there? There are seven, so I'm gonna multiply that by seven, and I get 126.14 grams of water. Now, you could have looked at this and said, oh, instead of two, I'm going to put 14 there, and instead of one, I'm gonna go ahead and write seven here. That's fine, you end up the same answer. It's just lots of different ways to work these. So. How do you do the percent salt? Well, take the amount that is salt, which is this part. Okay, it's gonna be um, the mass of the salt, which is 120.36, over the total mass, which is this and that. So 120.36 plus 126.14 times 100. And I get this to be, um, I did not work this part out, so let me just punch it in my calculator real, real quick. Um, 
you're going to get uh, 48.83. Oh, um, with the percentages, um, we carry them out two decimal places by standard. Okay, so um, when we were doing the, let me just flip back over here. Sorry about this. So, see, notice how I had it out two decimal places here. And then um, over here, I did two decimal places. By convention, that's when we're writing the percentages, we carry out two decimals. Now, what's the percent water? So I know you could say um, 100 minus that and get it, but I'm just going to do the whole thing, okay? So it's going to be 126.14 over the 120.36 plus 126.14 times 100. And there I get 51.17% is water. Okay, so that's the hydrate. You know, there are lots of different ways to have worked this problem. You just make sure you, ha you have your work there to support whichever method you're doing. This concludes video three. Be sure you took in-depth and high-quality notes. Have good example problems in your notes. And be sure to just come in with questions. We have lots of practice for you to do over this.